I'm Lee Kump. I'm a professor of geosciences at Penn State and a paleoceanographer. Paleoceanographer is kind of a strange term. I'm a person who studies ancient oceans. And um, this is a, something I came to um, as a graduate student. I was always interested in the oceans, and my graduate training is in oceanography, but my undergraduate work was in geology. So I had these dual interests of the oceans and the geologic record, and I was looking for something that would bring these two things together. And I found paleoceanography. So it's a study of, of ancient oceans looking at their record as they're preserved in sedimentary rocks. So I study intervals of Earth history that are particularly interesting. We look for rocks that are of that age. We investigate them. And uh, then we try to put that in the context of how the oceans, the atmosphere operating as a system, and how they might have behaved during these interesting intervals. So we're focusing on a particularly interesting and controversial interval of Earth history. It's the end Permian mass extinction. So this is a interval, a brief interval of geologic history some 250 million years ago um, that represents the largest mass extinction of all time. It's estimated that as much as 95 to 99 percent of all species on the planet went extinct during this interval of time. And so it's a major um, event in the history of, of the planet and, and it's an extraordinary event and so we're, sh we're certain that it was the result of very extraordinary causes and um, so there have been a number of hypotheses that have been proposed including asteroid impacts, massive volcanic eruptions. We've been focusing on the state of the ocean at this interval of time because there's good evidence that the ocean then was very different than what it is today. Uh, today, if we were to go down in a submarine and, and s go down into the deep ocean, we'd find an environment that was cold and was oxygen rich. And so it's an environment that supports diverse types of life that are, like ourselves, uh, uh, needy of an oxygen rich environment. When we look at the evidence from the Permian Ocean, we find out that the deep ocean was much warmer than it is today and it was devoid of oxygen. And so it was a very different sort of hostile world from, from the perspective of, of animal life. And what's really unusual about the evidence for the Permian Ocean is that it wasn't only free of oxygen, but it had a poisonous mixture of hydrogen sulfide and carbon dioxide that would have been um, instantly fatal to any organism like ourselves, like fish, or, or even um, marine plants like algae, exposed to that ocean. What we're investigating is the possibility that this poisonous ocean of the late Permian uh, migrated from not just uh, being in the depths of the ocean, but migrated up toward the surface and poisoned all the life at the surface. And um, just as importantly, as this hydrogen sulfide rose to the surface, it, is, it as a gas escaped into the atmosphere. I think we're all familiar with hydrogen sulfide. It's that characteristic smell of rotten eggs. What we think happened at the end of the Permian is that this poisonous ocean rose to the surface, hydrogen sulfide as a gas escaped into the atmosphere and wafted up onto the continents in big clouds of poisonous gas. Uh, wiping out life on land. One of the great mysteries of the Permian extinction is that it um, was a mass extinction not just in the oceans but on land. And so we're looking for some connection that linked the ocean extinction to the land extinction. We began studying the Permian Ocean, came to realize that it had this toxic mixture, and then with some simple modeling, computer modeling calculations, found out that that hydrogen sulfide could escape to the atmosphere and create toxic conditions within the atmosphere as well. So this is, of course, quite controversial. Um, there's some evidence for it, but not uh, overly convincing evidence. And other people have their own pet theories about what, what causes. We've had um, quite vigorous arguments at, at national meetings about, about this issue. One idea is that the buildup of hydrogen sulfide in the atmosphere, this is our particular idea, would lead to chemical reactions that would destroy the ozone layer, and we've demonstrated that with a computer model. Other people link that event to massive volcanism. And so there are these, these interesting clues from the geologic record that the environment was quite different. And one thing that we know and the dating now of those rocks has, has demonstrated pretty much beyond a shadow of a doubt that 
at the same time that organisms were dying all over the planet, massive volcanoes were, were erupting in Siberia. These are called the Siberian traps, and they're still voluminous basaltic rocks that have been preserved on the Siberian plateau that were deposited at this um, instant in geologic time. So any theory for the cause of this mass extinction has to include those, those volcanoes. You know, this is one of the most massive volcanic eruptions of all time.